How's it going guys? So we're gonna be harvesting corn silage here today. The harvesting crew is gonna be here in 12 hours or so. And so we're gonna get things ready to go. But one thing we had to put a big concrete block on the back of this tractor and a couple things with the bunks that we need to get finished up. Last week we finally got our solar array hooked into the grid and we had our tractor and generator sitting here because the power was out for a few hours. I wanna get this put away and use the tractor to move the sprayer that we have over there. This is our backup generator if we need to milk cows and we don't have power. This is all of our bunker silo plastic for the year. Gonna have to pick through this and find the sizes we need for the first bunker. We have these corrugated pipes we cut and stuck on top of our concrete walls. We're gonna pull plastic up over these walls and we don't wanna put holes in that plastic. Rough concrete could do that. But the only thing is these pipes get damaged sometimes. We're just going around checking for damage, fixing up any of these pipes that need it. There were a couple sections of pipe that we had to remove because they were really damaged. I'm just gonna cut new sections for those. Just sweeping out this third bunker to the right side of the tires there so everything's cleaned up besides under the tires. All of our corn this year was planted the same week and even though it's a couple different varieties, it's all drying down now. Looks like they're just gonna start cutting, fill all three, go around the clock, maybe 24 to 30 hours or something to get all three filled. So we're gonna start with the center bunk, move to this one, and then get all the tires out of the way and do the third one over there. We're gonna work at getting this concrete block hooked up now. My brother-in-law, Andrew, just got here. He's gonna be helping us out the next couple days. It's gonna be nice to have another guy around. We got the block on there. We gotta make an adjustment to get it sitting right. The issue we have is we have to have that top arm so long to get it hooked up, and then when you go lift it up, blocks tilted way back. You lift it up the whole way, it'll actually catch the tire. So we're gonna have to shorten that arm there. So we gotta put some blocks under the back of the block, get the weight off of it to shorten that arm. We got that top arm shortened as far as we could. That's a 5,000 pound weight in the back and then there's a 1,500 pound weight they have in the front. This tractor is gonna be just for packing. There's another rig coming along with our custom guy that's gonna have a blade for pushing. So this is a Versatile 255. This came from Agcom. Uh, it's our local dealer here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They deal Versatile tractors, ship parts across the US. They also sell Bear Claw. That's what this weight comes from. They have trailers for dirt and silage. And then they're also a McHale hay tool dealer. Just wanted to shout them out. I appreciate them letting us run this tractor for a couple days. It's 6.30 in the evening now. We're gonna get the plastic set up on the walls so we're ready to start harvesting then later. They got pushed back a little bit today so it looks like about midnight tonight they're gonna get here to get started. We got the plastic pulled up for this first bunker. Got a little breezy there at first but it's calming down now, it's good. So what we're gonna do once we have it full is pull up, I guess that far side first, that's gonna cover almost the whole bunk and then this side on top of that. So we're gonna get a double layer. It's gonna wrap that corner really well. And we like to send the plastic the whole way down to the floor because the acid from the silage actually eats away at the concrete over time. You can see this floor here, it's 19 years old. If you got a layer of plastic there, it's gonna help keep them from wearing out. This is the first year we got that big light up on the end of the barn. It's gonna be nice. It's one in the morning right now, and they just started chopping. Gonna be bringing the first load in in a minute. I'm gonna use the skid loader to push some of this around just to hold this plastic down a little extra.
This first bunker is 42 feet wide, 130 feet long. Should hold around 1,200 tons of silage. This is load number three here and the push tractor starting to work. Time to bring something in with a little more versatility to help us get this bunk packed. I just need to make sure I stay out of the pusher tractor's way. Turn on four wheel drive. This would be right here. There we go. I'm spinning out there. It's not what I want to be doing. 3 a.m. and they blew the back tire on the chopper. Hopefully they can find another tire. It's apparently an odd size. Well, it's 3:15 and they got a new tire on the chopper already. If you can get a tire replaced in half an hour at three in the morning, you're doing pretty good. It's a few hours later, got myself a nap. chopping here right across the road from the home place we're making corn silage here so they're going through chopping it off eight inches off the ground and chopping the entire stalk up so everything's going in there stalk leaves and the ear get the grain in there so corn silage is the main ingredient in our cow feed mix a pretty good complete feed you got the forage there a lot of energy from the grain in there as well Say the bunk's about three quarters full now. I'm gonna switch off and take over for Andrew, let him go get breakfast. They got about 85 cartloads in there now. Usually holds about 100 for that middle bunk. Soon gonna be switching over to the second one. We got some help coming, we're gonna roll this plastic out. gonna be some running around here for a bit because once we're done with that metal bunker we have to pull the plastic up cover it and then we want to get plastic on that wall for filling this bunker we're gonna have plastic on this wall beforehand so they can start pushing feet against this side a little bit until we get that wall ready to go Trying to get it full, but not overly full that we can't pack down to the wall. 
and it's nice for covering. We can actually walk along the side and not have it be super steep, safer. Instead of a blade, he has a, it's kind of a fork with a, the back of it pushes out so you can feather it out. It seems to work pretty well. I think this will be the last cart load. He can actually scoop and hold it a little bit, carry it forward if he wants to. Yeah, let's switch it over now. We got this clear, real thin plastic. First thing we're gonna do is roll this out. This will be on the bottom layer. It kind of fits around the bumps in the silage. We got Rylan and Rhonda helping us out here. They're gonna roll it out part way. We gotta wait till they're done packing the front of the bunk yet. So we'll roll that out, pull the back plastic up, pull uh, that side up, and then this side over top. The chopper's done at the neighboring farm. Now he's gonna move back here. We're gonna chop all these fields behind us. Just laying tires on top, pushing the extra air out of the plastic. Gotta get the Instagram picture. 
Well, we got it covered. Worked out really well. We were able to get the plastic on there and then get the plastic rolled out for the sidewall for the second bunker. We didn't stop the harvesting crew at all. They did stop for a little break to change shifts. They're running around the clock right now. Yeah, already got a good start in the second trench. I'd like to take a look at the silage and see if the kernels are being processed properly. So the chopper has a bunch of knives in it chopping it up. It also has a roller. So I don't want to find any whole kernels in here. Finding some like this, it's almost a whole kernel. Cows are able to digest energy from the corn. Although if it's not broken up, that whole kernel will just pass right through their digestive system. I just called the guy running the chopper. He's gonna check his settings and see if he can tighten those rolls a little bit more. Just like to see it process a little bit better. Thought it was doing good earlier, but now we're on a different variety. It seems to be acting a little bit different. This bunk we're filling now is the last one we're gonna feed. It'll be next summer, so it's gonna be sitting in there, fermenting and breaking down and getting more digestible. It is brutal out here today. It's about 95 degrees. There are good ways into that second bunker. Now we have to get this third one ready to go. Gonna move all these tires out of the way and cut that extra plastic that's hanging off of that wall from the first bunker. We used the sidewall tires on that center bunk. It would have been nice to be able to use these up, these half car tires. These take up a lot more space piled here. Could have gotten rid of a bunch of them. Problem is we're gonna feed out that center bunker first and then we'll have no place to go with those tires. They end up being piled out front here and making a mess. I really like to have those on one of these side bunkers that are gonna be fed out later. We're gonna have to push these all out in front, maybe right out in front of the middle one, and then we'll use them later tonight. So that Sutter bunk is 42 foot wide, it holds about 1,200 ton. Now these side ones, 34 feet wide, hold about 900 ton. The idea here is we're trying to force every bit of oxygen out of this pile that we can, so that we don't have mold other bad things growing in there that need oxygen. So he's just pushing every load up here, trying to make a four to six inch layer. That way we can pack every layer, try to get really good density. We just have a second tractor, just uh, packing away. It's really nice to have two to keep up with the chopper. This operator is really good at feathering the feed out, getting a nice even layer, and then we can pack it well. They got all this field done right around the bunk. Now they're working down that way. Got a bunch more corn to cut. It's yielding pretty well. So far, I'm happy with the yields. Dad's working at moving these tires now. We're renting this grapple 
to help move these tires. It's pretty handy. I'm taking the inoculant out to the chopper again. So we mix it up for 400 ton at a time. Two gallons does 400 ton. It's just gonna slowly feed it in as it's going through the chopper. It helps it to ferment properly. It's gonna lose some dry matter as it goes through the fermentation process. And the inoculant's supposed to help save as much dry matter as we can and preserve the feed. I'm gonna mix up another batch of the preserver in a while. Uh, this is the product here, crop guard it's called. Just helps stabilize the forage in the bunk there. The key with this stuff is you gotta keep it cold. I'm gonna put this jug in the fridge now. And this chopper has an insulated tank on it, so it keeps it cold on the chopper. It's got live bacteria in it. Just taking the brush through that bunk. It's gonna be ready to go then. 15 or 20 loads, and that second one's full. Pulling plastic up on the third bunker. A little breezy, but we're getting good at this. Good to have a lot of help. It's really nice having silage to use to hold the plastic in place. We're at about 2,000 tons harvested at this point. They just have 12 acres or so right there, and then 29 acres at a rented farm, and that'll be all the corn for the year. It's crazy how quick they can take care of that. Second bunk is full. They're working on the third now. Had that all set up for them. This was an easier transition because they're not sharing a wall like the first time was. So we could get it all set up and they just switched over, no problem. So we're gonna roll our clear plastic out, fold the sides up, do the same thing. <laughs> the clear plastic we're using on this bunk is a little bit of orangish color to it. This is actually the Silo Stop brand. We've used this some in the past. Not completely convinced that it's worth the money but we decided to try it on the bunk we're gonna feed next summer this will be sitting in here the longest feeding out in the hot weather this is a true oxygen barrier it's supposed to really keep any air from being able to move through so we're just tucking this in a little bit and then we're gonna pull these side plastic pieces up now it's gonna go out past the edge That grapple's a game changer. It's a little bit hard to dump them onto the bunk then. It'd be nice to have a telescopic wheel loader or something. tractor working on getting to halfway done with this third bunker this silage is a little bit greener that's good it's probably pushing 68 to 70 percent it's my guess so we just rotate back and forth when the wagon comes in they always dump right behind where I'm at and then I'll switch over once they're empty and he'll push the pile up It is 12.30 and that's the last cart load unloading right there. 
we did it 3,000 tons in 24 hours it is the next morning we got the third bunker finished last night we did not cover it we were planning to pull the plastic over last night but there wasn't a breeze and there's gases coming out of these first two bunks already kind of strong back here so we decided just to go to bed you got to be careful with silage gases I don't get quite as nervous around bunkers because you have all this fresh air but when there's no breeze at all it gets a little bit worrisome I'm getting the weight off the versatile tractor here because they're gonna pick this tractor up soon I had to get that top arm extended again so I can get it unhooked till next year hopefully we get a breeze that kicks up kind of soon so we can put this plastic on Sounds funny to say, it's nice for it to be calm, but we do not like gases. You can see a little bit of foggy stuff coming out of the end of that bunker there. Kind of floating that way now. First, the tile's ready to go. I like to have that front weight on there because normally we feel like we have to go backwards up to the back edge to get it packed well. That weight seemed to make a big difference. The front tires did pretty good with packing. I took it down to the neighbors to have a scale thing weighed about 31,000 pounds or a little more we're gonna go ahead and cover this bunker now got a little bit of air movement just enough to push that gas that way we got it packed good it shouldn't really hurt it to be left open here for 12 hours well not even 12 hours the key they say though is not to go back and pack over this once it sits for a while you're better off just letting it go if you try to pack it, it would actually push air down into the pile somehow just under 3,000 ton we did in 24 hours this was the driest year that I experienced and we still ended up with a good corn crop. We had some nice rains there in the middle of the summer, but never too much rain. We're getting some tires cleaned up around the bunk and then we're gonna start pulling plastic when we have more help here. Okay, slide down a little. Oh, we don't have to worry about getting gassed out. It's plenty breezy. It's making the job a little difficult come up underneath the plastic so we're just getting our sandbags set in place and then we're gonna lay tires in here we're getting tires thrown on now Ag comes back to get their tractor so yeah thanks to these guys so you can see how this top plastic seals the edge really well that plastic goes all the way down to the floor there. No air can get in that corner at all. Let me stretch it across and put sandbags on the opposite side. The whole way down through. And there was a piece underneath that was folded up this wall underneath there. So it, as long as there's no holes in the plastic, this is really sealed up. And then we just start in the back with tires, just force all the air out the front. So we got a bunch of these truck sidewall tires are really nice take up a little more square footage they're not so heavy and we can stack them nice we're done with those now we got to use the half car tires to finish up we've used different strategies for how we layer the plastic we used to use two short pieces on the sidewalls fold them both in and then put a cap piece we're kind of liking the longer pieces on the sides that just overlap there's no extra cap piece on top then so that way one side is sealed up without sandbags what we do then is on this side it goes down the wall and actually wraps onto the floor a good foot foot and a half so if water runs down that wall, it'll actually work its way out the front more rather than going into the feed since it kind of has a channel there in the corner. Would have taken a few more tons in there if we had it, but pretty much full. The other two are about exactly where I want them. Pretty happy. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Only ended up being one video for three bunkers this year because just did them back to back. We're gonna start feeding into this center one right away. This is the unified corn, which is the same stuff we had in that little ag bag two weeks ago. Cows shouldn't skip a beat. Should be good feed. We have a little bit more silage in the bunks than we did last year. We're gonna buy a little bit of silage off the neighbor and top off the one silo. Maybe do that later this week. See you in the next one guys. Thanks for watching.